picture of Mandy Maroon at the Blue Mountain Museum. <laughs> he was a staple in our town. Boats and boating. Yacht. Yeah. Very romantic. The Diana. Birch bark canoes by Daniel Wassam Mimet. <laughs> Nineteen twenty eight. Wow. That's some craftsmanship. So it was made out of one tree so that they could have the birch on it. Yeah, they tried to make the full yeah, skin of the tree. How big they are. There, Brenda. Those are cool. Well, look at them. Skinned it, formed it. But you could totally make a bow out of one of those skins. You see that? Pleasure rowboats. Yeah, beginning of the pontoon era. No, this this one here. This is a river drive bateau. bateau. Says down here. Three crew man the bateau, one boatman, and two river drivers, which one of our uncles was a river driver. Mm -hmm. The boatman typically rode upstream, not for propulsion, but for maneuverability, as the boat was swept down river with the logs. The river drivers carried long pike poles. Their job was to pry grounded logs loose before the logs started a major log jam. Huh. Log Hotel. We'll check it out. This was Merwin's Blue Mountain House Annex, the Log Hotel. 1850 to 1943. We'll check it out. It's the Log Hotel. This is as far as you can go in here, though. Where? The bathroom. Oh, yeah. Here's one of the bedrooms. bedrooms on this floor and four more upstairs served as sleeping quarters for guests of the Blue Mountain House Hotel. Once we went over there, 
Oh, it's got a little sink. And a stove. And chamber pot. <laughs> <laughs> The Log Hotel is the oldest building on the Adirondack Experiences site and is on the National Register of Historic Places. It was built in 1876 as part of Merwin's Blue Mountain House. Close for restoration. What can we see in there? That's cool. Ooh, look at this. Chandelier thing up there. Yeah, all brass. Look the, at that. Uh, insulators? Yeah. So that part of it was added onto the old part. Put it way upstairs. The rustic privy. Anybody gotta go? It's a double holer. So you can visit with your friend while you're going. Oh. All right. You are forced. Nope. I'm for a slump. <laughs> the competition is on. Oh, Lord. Well, it's not much of a competition, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, maybe. Marion River Care Railroad ran on a short stretch of land between Utawana Lake and Marion River, where the river was impassable by boat. Wow. Check it out. Racket Lake Trans Company. That's cool. Look at this. Nice. That must have been one hot job in the summertime. Oh my gosh. There's your boiler. Look at that thing. That's cool. Oh, and then you can, there's the passenger car. There we go. Woohoo! Comes the train. <laughs> Woohoo! Coming in. All right, we're gonna go in the cafe, see what they've got in here. So far, we got hot dogs and cheese sticks. There's more stuff coming. <laughs> <laughs> but we got the but best look at the view from the cafe. Wow. Mike got the mountain man. Count them up. Yellow birch burl. That's a burl slab. It's a burl. So it's not really the center of the tree. Please touch to find what Bear's camera feels like. <laughs> Mark, please touch. You see how the bear skin red feels. You already know. <laughs> Hunting lodge. <laughs> It's a long story. In 1959, Noah John Rondo participated in a series of programs over Noah John Rondo, this is his cabin. There's his cabin. This is actual cabin. Noah John Rondo, the hermit, he used to come into Tupper Lake. Get supplies sometimes and trade. Cool is that? It's his actual cabin. He lived in that. There he is. It was always amazing. He was. So he wasn't schooled, but he had his own coded writing that he, well, it looks like he, 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 he could write. He wrote beautifully, but he had a coded, only he could read it. And there he is there in front of this cabin. Schoolhouse.
smells like an old schoolhouse. The Reesing Schoolhouse. There's a teacher in here. Run. 1932 to 1945. Are we supposed to? We're supposed to go when we come in. Okay. That's not, I was never in detention. School has a toilet. Schoolhouse toilet. It's your. It's kind of cool though. They're they're reusing it to, for kids can come in here and stuff and, and do things in here. Did have a little teacher, but. He didn't want to be recorded. That's cool. Okay. Uh oh. Come on. Kind of working. There it is. Perfect. Come out and do that in the middle of the winter. Yeah. Rustic summer house. Rusting places. Which offer shelter from the sun or rain. You want to get framed? <laughs> oh, Mr. Turkey. Oh, and Mr. Squirrel, run away. Mike is after you. Oh, ah. Oh, no, oh, no, no. Michael, get me. I love you very much. Mwah. So cool the way it was all made, huh? Somebody's got a lot of time on That's their hands. Beautiful. Mm. Oh yeah. Hmm. Probably for hanging stuff. Oh, maybe. Ballet. Ballet. I don't think so. Check out the train. Oh, you can walk right through. They rode in style. Oh my God, this is gorgeous.
looks like the sleeping room. Everything's so ornate. If this was like the Rockefeller shop. I don't know. I'll look outside. Another little, oh, it's even got a toilet. Toilet and a sink and a shower over there. Huh. Another bedroom. A little sink and a little table. Down this would be yeah, awesome. Nice Look at all the ornate stuff in here. That's beautiful. Look at these cool doors. Oh, they're round. Oh, curved, yeah. This would be neat. Playing cards. Kitchen. Oh wait, there's prices. I can't read it. For a mixed coffee, I can't tell you paid a dollar fifty. Well, that's expensive. Uh, one pound box of something tea, dollar fifty. Five pound box Dom burger, forty cents. Ten pounds granulated sugar, fifty three cents. Three pounds of powdered sugar, seventeen cents. Oh, okay. So that was this their was whole everything was their they, whole had, they on had on here. board. What they paid. Yeah. A total of forty-one dollars, I think. That was to stock this. To stock this kitchen for the trip. Yeah, forty-one bucks. Look at that. Two glass something. 19 what? 1906? Is that up top? Yeah. Up top is hard to see it. Oh yeah. March 9th, 1906. That's a lot of money though. Oh, there you go, a little stove. Why don't you come out? Oh, and this is where you said your stuff. All aboard. All aboard, Brenda. That's the original Kildare train station. There's Mike. Which isn't far from where we live. It's inside the railway station. We were just looking for names and stuff people we know. This is was near where we live. We only found one. I won't mention the name. That's the old railroad sign. No flashing lights. No. Cute. Get to inside. A little yeah. camper. A little back. Head in there. No, not really. Our being at its best. I wonder if it opened up in the back too. They used to. I should open it up and set it up. Yeah, it does. 2016 was the last time it was registered and used. That's cool. Yeah. For the, the guys to be able to bring around their the bunch of sportsmen who came up from the city to go hunting and fishing. And so they were designed for two things. They were designed to hold a lot of weight. And we're trying to still be able to move fast. Okay. And so the majority of Adirondack guide boats can hold upwards of a thousand pounds and still move six to seven miles per hour in the water. And there's some things that allow that to happen. 
One is that you're rowing backwards, which allows the guys to not only use their arms when they're rowing, but you okay. hold back and shoulder muscles too, so you get more power from that. And the other thing is that you quickly notice the organs overlap, mm -hmm. which makes it quite tricky, but that's also to increase the, the power of the stroke okay. and allow you to get more, more from that. Okay. So let the simulation explain the rest. Right. Hello. Rowing a guideboat is different from paddling a canoe or kayak. First, you row backwards the whole time. Second, the oar handles overlap to allow longer strokes. Okay, time to get started. Head for the opposite shore. Remember to look over your shoulder to see where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion is going to be you're going to bring the oar handles into your chest and then push down to your waist. It helps if you um, stretch your legs out all the way. <laughs> She's short legged. <laughs> then push down and out. Down and out. Pull the oar handles into your chest. This way. Other way around. No, you're going, you're pushing. You're pushing. Push, pull, the, pull the oar handles into your chest, then push them down to your waist. Push them down to your waist. And then push out towards your feet. Now you're in, now you're grabbing. There you go. That's a little confusing at first because you're going backwards and oar handles overlap. Keep going. You got it. What would we go? And this is from the blue mountain lake right here, so. See where you're going? Yeah, that works. You're going that way. And this will take you right into a little island here. Don't you know there's no water? <laughs> Step it up, come on, you're old. Out of time. You pretty much made it to shore. Hey, at least you can swim from there. It's all the mining stuff. Don't worry. Kind of like the smell of the rocks down here iron. themselves. And it's always good weather. Cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Mm -hmm. Wow. Three speed transmission, so that's like actually just a small vehicle when they use it for cutting ice. That's cool. Obviously, you got grease in it because they got a pan or anything that gets in the grease. Alright. What's this thing? They use it for the rolls, I guess. They used to dig and roll up. Oh, okay. They'd pack the snow down instead of getting rid of it. They'd pack it. So you could drive on it. Rolling snow. Oh, there we go. Smooth ride. A smooth ride. You're fired. You are fired, There's a dining room with a bowl. This is the gallery. The bowl cottage. Beautiful. Going up. South bedroom.
north bedroom. Beautiful porch. Oh, yeah. Right now. All right, so you can clean a fish. You can take the insides out of the fish. <laughs> oh. It's another fish. I need a walleye. I can eat some. Oh, there's a little baby. Ate another baby. That's crickets. Dragonflies. Yeah. That's so what they ate. And a giant slug. Ew. Cool, huh? This is in the reflection pond. Look at the trout. There's all kinds of fish in there. Push the rail. See? Ready? Yeah. This is what the Adirondacks are known for. Logging. Well, Hello, horsey. Oh, the park alone. Here's the tan leather. Oh. Here's the tan leather. Oh, yeah. One of these. Oh, wow, that's big. You know what they used to make them out of? Tidy. Spring. Oh, the spud is for debarking the trees. Okay. And we have Mark's grandmother's spud that she would use to take the bark off the tree. It's made out of an old Model T spring. Cool. Right. So we had our grandma does a tell, right? Yep. Who was a camp cook. We had Uncle John and Uncle Dave who used to do that, and they were river drivers in the Adirondacks. That was what they were called, and this is what they did. Grandmother's brothers. And this is what they used. That was dangerous. This tractor was built in 1926 in Morris, New York, and it was used in Tupper Lake by the Oglewood Dish Corporation. Huh. That's cool. And it even has OWD on the side. Conifer Mill. How many people live there? There was 200 people that lived there. All company, all company people. Wow. Conifer I was today. telling Mark, my grandfather worked at, the, the, at this mill right here. Cool. My, my, my father's father. So this is the gift store. <laughs> Oh, there's a loons thing, Brenda. That's your basic gift store with all kinds of things that are on deck things. Thanks for watching. We hope you liked the video, and we'll see you on the next adventure. Bye bye.